And good morning. <laughs> Welcome to God's house of worship today. Uh, whew. <laughs> Long trek downstairs. Um, especially after the youth event. Um, if my left side of my body isn't as demonstrative as my right side of my body, Dustin and I met at first base at the youth kickball outing. So, uh, and it hurts to breathe deeply. <laughs> oh, you do play football, I hope. Yeah, oh boy. Anyway, it's good to be with you. We plan to celebrate communion today. If you are a member uh, of a church by profession of faith publicly and in good standing, you're welcome to join us if you're visiting. And uh, Matt, Mark 14, 15 says, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. And so we're blessed, aren't we, to eat at God's feast. Before we get to that, um, congratulations, first of all. Mark, congratulations. Boys, congratulations. A new little baby sister, a daughter. So happy for you, uh, Ruby Ellen, beautiful name, and um, we're glad that everything went well and mom and baby are home. Uh, also, we want to congratulate Frank Vogel, uh, Frank online, uh, this week, Tuesday, planning on your 95th birthday. Uh, we, uh, we are thankful and pray that you'll enjoy that with your family. Thirdly, congratulations to the congregation, to all of you. Um, last week, we had a sermon on tithing. And unbeknownst to me, in the bulletin, we're hearing all about how we gave over our pledge amount by $120,000. And I didn't congratulate you on that while I called you to tithe. Congratulations. God has given you cheerful hearts and generous hearts this year, and uh, I am thankful with you for his blessings. Congregational meeting tomorrow night at 6 p.m. right here, and education kickoff will be coming. Now, we're going to run through those who are involved in education this year. I'm going to ask you to stand when I mention your part. If you are a teacher in anything from coffee break and adult ed down to the little uh, children in worship, if you're a leader or a teacher, stand up, please. This includes everything from YU to catechism and Sunday school. All right. Wow, are we thankful for you, and we pray for you as the year begins. Um, it would be really interesting to hear anyone who is taught by or led by one of these, would you stand up? All right, you're having an impact. And I want to pray a moment for you. Let's pray for all of the children and the parents, these teachers. Lord God, as you have raised up people who are willing to teach us not just the good news of the gospel, but all the implications of it from gratitude to grateful, obedient life. Send your Holy Spirit on these today as they begin this education year, as cadets and gems meet and other groups meet Lord, would you not only cause your spirit to fall upon them, but would you also enable them to uh, thankfully and joyfully look for fruit in other people. Help them to see it. As they bring your word, may it go deep into hearts and be seed, seed planted for fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our worship service this morning is going to follow uh, a little different pattern. We're going to be following the pattern in the back of our gray songbooks for communion service. And so, uh, as we begin, I'm going to ask you, oh, I told you to sit, to stand now for God's greeting. And as you greet one another, everybody stand. And we will go through this unannounced In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Let's greet one another. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us.
to all who confess themselves to be sinners, humbling themselves before God and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation, I declare this sure promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us, forgiving our sins and purifying us from all unrighteousness. Let's sing a great song of thanks. Let us as God's forgiven people now listen to His law, His will for our lives. And God said, I'm the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses His name. Remember the Sabbath day keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant, your maidservant, your ox, your animal within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but He rested on the seventh day. Therefore, He blessed the Sabbath day and He made it holy. 
set apart. Honor your father and mother, that you may live long in the land the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, his wife, manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And this is the law of freedom in a, in a world of chaos. It's the law of freedom where we finally understand who we serve and how. Let's sing together, your will be done. What a gift, oh God, to be called out of slavery to sin and wickedness, to the devil himself and to selfishness, to be called back into your service by grace. Knowing that Jesus has finished it, we, we bow thankfully. He's finished all our guilt, all our shame, all our sin. It has been paid for and we come grateful that you, perfect in all your ways, wise, powerful, kind, and just, our holy creator, you have become our redeemer. We come to your table again this morning, hungry for righteousness. We thank you that Jesus is our righteousness with you. And as we come, we thank you that you prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies our enemies of our own sin, the world's temptations, Satan's lies, they are not as great as Jesus. They could not hold him, and by faith in him, they cannot hold us. You have set us free, and you can restore us through Christ's work by the power of the Holy Spirit, making us truly new creations. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that good news today. Thank you for the other bounty you share with us each day. We do not walk the streets destitute or forsaken. You've given us our daily bread. We anticipate giving you even excess, our offerings in a moment. We will lay them at your feet, proving our trust in you and our love for the neighbors you set here beside us. But we also pray that these monies given to ministries we support worldwide will reach distant neighbors and lands that they might know you and the joy of your grace and forgiveness, the joy of your renewing power and Holy Spirit, knowing you. Thank you also for the abundant offerings that were given last year. You have richly blessed our congregation. Thank you for good surgeries and, and medical appointments, for Marv Skolton's hip replacement particularly. Thank you for birthdays, Friday for Ruby Ellen, and next Tuesday, a 95th celebration of a birthday for Frank Vogel. Lead these and guide and guard and protect them on the heavenward road. If others sorrow today, bless them. If some of us are lonely, grant us friends. If we feel nervous or anxious, Give us peace. If we feel doubt, grant us assurance that you have already planned our lives and you 
have planned for them to belong to you. At the start of the education season, we ask that you would use these Sunday school teachers and helpers and the education committee members and the superintendent and, and all of these to, to help our young people to hear your voice by your word and to know you. We pray for our friends, the Glenzies. Please keep their daughter-in-law and their granddaughters safe as they travel between Southeast Asia and Wisconsin. Bless their work as they spread your kingdom's reach in a largely unreached place. Thank you for guiding and keeping all our missionaries. Grant that in a month when we enjoy Mission Emphasis Sunday, our hearts and lives may become more bold in our witness. We also ask you to be near and dear to Wilma Foreman as she walks the dark valley of the shadow. Shed your light over her and strengthen her faith as her body weakens. Bless her children, her relatives who travel this way. And Lord, bless each of us that we may walk on the way, that way of him, our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We come to you in his name. Amen. Children, ages three to pre-kindergarten, you may come forward at this time, the first time this year for our first meeting of children in worship. Whenever you see the flag sitting here, that means we're gonna come and sit here. That means we're gonna pray before you go. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good to see you today. Good morning. Oh, somebody's not ready to come yet, but he'll probably join us later. Would you like to have a seat? There you go. Maybe that's going to be our number until others merge as we go out. Oh, there comes another one with Dad. Are you taking Dad too? That's good. Good to see you guys. All right, let's pray. Lord, as these children orient themselves to you and the way that you have done things in history, might they learn their part in your story of salvation and the great day when you come again. Please give them faith. And uh, we ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Now what we do is we wait till our leader goes up and when she's there, then we can follow her. Okay, there you go. Wonderful. Good work. Now the adults get to sing and give our offerings. Let's do that now.
as we continue our series of messages on worship, I actually jumped ahead one topic to the sacraments as we take those in worship. I um, was intending to look at um, preaching and what goes on in preaching, but we'll do that next week as the sacraments, at least one of them, are being celebrated today. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, and when you found that, you may jump to 1 Corinthians, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and then 1 Corinthians 11. At Matthew 28, 18 first, then 1 Corinthians 11, 23. Matthew 28, 18. And actually, I'll give you the context back at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And then 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, the Apostle Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends in Christ, people give tokens of love to each other, don't they? If you care about someone, you could buy them a meal. You could get them a birthday card. You could buy them a Christmas present. You could give them a hug or give them a text as a sign outwardly of an inward affection. Some tokens, though, are more official and symbolic. Uh, for instance, a wedding ring, right? Uh, this wedding ring is a complete circle without an end. It's made of a precious metal, a sign of a, a relationship that will last a lifetime and a promise, you will be valuable to me until death parts us. That's my promise. In weeks past, I've said corporate worship is a sort of renewal of vows, a covenant renewal ceremony, a dialogue between God and us, back and forth. First, God's Word calls us, and we respond asking for help. We invoke His help. And then God blesses us, and we respond with praise. Then God's Word comes to us, His law, and we confess our sins. And then He tells us the gospel assuring us of the gift of the gospel. And we respond with prayer, but also giving tokens. We give our monies, our tokens to Him. But does God ever give tokens to us? Physical, visible signs? He does, two of them. He gives baptism and the Lord's Supper. For obvious reasons, I'm gonna be focusing on the Lord's Supper more this morning. We're gonna be taking it, Lord willing, in moments. But these are important sacraments. This is the front door opened into covenant fellowship with God. That's what this initiatory rite is about. It, it brings us into God's family, and it signs that we are covered and we are His family. This is a table that brings us into His very fellowship room, His kitchen, if you will, his dining room to sit and have a meal with the Lord and with each other. 
It is a confirming right. Both these signs are continually separated from the world and kept in the church as a holy sign. Why? Because Jesus commanded the disciples, His church of that day, to do these things, to go baptizing and to do this meal. We call the sacraments signs and seals for good reason. God's Word talks about the Old Testament sacrament this way. Abraham received the sign of circumcision as a seal of the righteousness he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. So what are signs and seals? First, a sign. A sign always points beyond itself. A sign on the road on Interstate 90 saying Sioux Falls 25 miles says nothing about the sign itself. I'm wood, I'm metal. No. It rather points to Sioux Falls, which exists 25 miles from that spot. And so the sacraments of the church are signs, not pointing to water or juice and bread, but pointing to forgiveness, the renewal of our lives, removing our sin, justification, sanctification, even glorification. They don't point to themselves or ourselves. These are not signs of our faith, but signs to our faith. And Jesus' sacramental signs are also seals. A notary public might take some official document and seal it, assuring and ensuring that it's valid. The seal gives assurance to the one who receives it. And so God's seals, the sacraments, are God's intent to tell us, no, I love you. I really exist nearby. And I really intend to bless and to grace you who believe in me more surely than Sioux Falls exists beyond that sign. God gives his people tokens of love, and it shouldn't surprise us because God is a God of emblems. God gave emblems, signs and seals to his people long ago, and, and every time he'd make a promise, it would seem he gave them something to look at, some sign. Reflect on various covenants God made with his people. There was Adam in the beginning, and God, in dealing with him, gave him a tree with implications for his descendants. To Noah, Adam, a tree of life. To Noah, God gave a rainbow sign involving Noah and his family, even his descendants. To Abraham, in Genesis 15, God then has him come outside and look at the stars. Here's my sign. You're going to have more than that who are your true descendants by faith. And circumcision. Put the sign then on, on any offspring in your home eight days old as males. Throughout the history of redemption, God dealing with His people has included emblems to illustrate His promise, to confirm His promise both physically and verbally. So is it a surprise when Jesus came? And then again, even as he was leaving in Matthew 28, that he would pick up the Old Testament themes of emblems, an Old Testament sacrament, Passover. Jesus gives bread and wine as a sign and a seal, awaking our faith to the mighty work he did as the firstborn lamb, his blood sprinkled better than the old Passover. He said, this bread and this juice are a new covenant in my blood. Do this, remembering me. Because we'll be taking the Lord's Supper, I'll focus on that emblem, as I said, of the Lord's Supper today at the expense of baptism, but both are signs and seals. But they are signs and seals pointing in multiple directions. 
And that's something I, I think I'm going to try to bring home today from God's word. They point us in multiple directions. First, backward. To look back, Jesus said, do this in remembrance, looking back at me and what I did. Remember my finished work on the cross. We're prone to amnesia. We forget good gifts. We forget our blessings. In the busyness of life, we even start to be frustrated and, and not say thank you and not live gratefully. He tells us, remember, see my sign and seal and remember how I have loved you, that Jesus died and rose again for me and you, that by His Spirit He's present to minister His supper to you, His token, more real and even more faithful than any spouse's wedding ring. When you see the cut and broken bread, remember Jesus' flesh pierced, pierced by a sword for your sins, the breaking of his skin. When you see the wine poured out, remember the blood spilt for your forgiveness. When you smell, when you smell the juice Remember the pleasing aroma of Christ's once-for-all sacrifice that has satisfied our God in our place. And when you taste the bread, taste and see that the Lord is good. Remember that Jesus is the bread from heaven, righteousness that fills all our spiritual need and strengthens God's people for new acts of righteousness new love on our earthly pilgrimage. But the Lord's Supper is more. More than a backward remembrance, looking back to the finished work of Christ. The sacrament also looks forward in hope to what Christ will one day do. God is a God of hope. And that is seen in the sacrament. Some Christian traditions stop at only looking back when they come to the table, only remembering to their hurt. Guy Prentice Waters in his book on the Lord's Supper says, the meaning of the supper is not the sum total of our unaided powers of reflecting. God is doing more in this meal. By His power to strengthen our hope our text today said we should eat and drink, proclaiming the Lord's death until what? Until he comes. And he will surely come. He promised, I'm coming soon to eat a meal with us face to face. This is pictured in the Old Testament. Back in the Old Testament, when people came into the tabernacle, as they entered into the tabernacle, they could bring peace offerings, and they were voluntary offerings. Part of the meal was burned up. Part of it was shared between the people and the priest as close as possible to God that any Israelite who wasn't a Levite could go. A picture of eating with God. It was recorded in Leviticus 7, but the prophet Zephaniah said this, the day of the Lord is near. And the Lord himself will prepare a festal sacrifice and will invite all his guests. So Luke records that hope. He says, blessed is he who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Jesus knew these prophecies. He knew what was pictured in the tabernacle. He will take his people into his house to eat with him forever. Communion is not just the climax of this morning's worship service. It will be the climax of a whole life of worship when we eat at his table forever, like crippled Mephibosheth at King David's table, only fully healed. As Jesus' last supper began with the disciples, he said, 
But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. That's really quite amazing. He's referring to the kingdom of God in its final, complete form, the new heavens and the new earth, and a glorious table set for his people at which he serves. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. A glorious new meal. As God provided Israel manna and water in the desert, desert, but still promised a future land of fullness and greater blessing, a promised land of Canaan, Jesus blesses the bread and the juice today, but calls us to look forward for greater and more wondrous things in God's final complete kingdom. Here, Revelation 19, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And this is seen in glory, seen in glory with the saints and their Lord. Friends, today we're drawing nearer to that great day of hope. Let this meal strengthen your assurance. If we think the supper is only about looking back in remembrance of the death of Christ, it will become more a funeral than a feast. We look forward with hope. And we look forward considering these directions that Jesus has died, Jesus is preparing a place for us. But next, we not only look back or forward, but up. God is a God of vertical fellowship. In the sacraments, Jesus, who once died but now is alive, draws us to himself by faith. 1 Corinthians 10 says, the cup of blessing which we bless is a communion in the blood of Christ. And the bread which we break is a, is a communion of the body of Christ. God gives this visual aid to stir our faith and to remind us of probably the greatest, if not one of the greatest, doctrines of our Christian faith, union with Christ. That he is now our new leader and covenant head. And we are considered in him. No longer in Adam, now in the second Adam. Ready for a new and perfect kingdom. The true believer is stirred to faith in Christ by the Holy Spirit as we partake of his body and blood. We know that his death and his sacrifice are ours. His victory over sin and death, his resurrection counts as ours. Like a wire transfer of all his blessings to our account and to our hearts. He wants us to know that union means we've died and risen by faith We share in his present victory now, all as we faithfully partake of this seal, this guarantee that it's done in principle already. It's lost if we only look back. If we only look forward, we must look up to him. Marcus Peter Johnson says, our memories of Christ are no substitute for his living presence. So how do we fellowship with him looking up? How do we participate in his body and blood? Christian traditions disagree. Some only memorialize Christ, as I said, at the sacrament. It's more what I'm doing to remember, only looking back. Others, like the Roman church, speak of a miracle by which the bread and wine actually become the very body and blood of Jesus. The Lutheran church speaks of Jesus coming down to become somehow in, with, and under the elements. But not us. None of these. We reformed go a different direction. We go up to Christ by faith. Why? 
Listen to Ephesians 2, 6. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms, in Christ Jesus. Past tense, he did this. By union with Christ, we've already died and we are already citizens of heaven. Colossians 3, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. So are you a citizen of O'Brien County, of Sioux County? Yes, but temporarily, the truest reality is I'm a citizen of heaven. By faith in Christ, by union with Him. And so communion invites us and our faith up to where Christ is seated already. And that is why in the communion form, you'll hear us use the sursum corda. You've never heard that word, but it's Latin. It means lift up your hearts. Early church fathers, Cyprian and Augustine, Cyril, later Calvin, used this formula. Calvin says in his Institutes of the Faith about communion, quote, let us lift up our hearts and spirits to where Jesus Christ is in the glory of his Father and from where we wait his return. Let us not waste time with these earthly corruptible elements as though Jesus were enclosed within the bread and wine. And yet, Calvin goes on, and I paraphrase, the bread and wine are not just tokens of a bygone era. When believers receive them by faith, we're not merely receiving a memory of Christ, we're receiving Christ himself, being drawn deeper into union with him behind the veil. Our Belgic Confession says, just as truly as we take and hold the sacrament in our hands, and we eat and drink it with our mouths, by which our earthly life is sustained. Regular food does that. More truly, we receive in our souls for our spiritual life the true body and blood of Christ our Savior in our place. A mere memorial meal cannot strengthen the soul. We must look up to him whose strength has risen and ascended to new life. And so to summarize this token of God, bread and wine, they must make us look back to remember what he did once, his finished work, to look forward at what he will do at his return and what he's prepared in glory. And we must in the sacrament be looking up to the living one whose body and blood nourish us to live for him. But lastly, we must look out, for God is also a God of horizontal fellowship. The tokens of his love draw us more fully into Christ, but our communion is not only up with Christ, it is also out with all true believers who know him by true faith. The apostle said it most clearly, he said, for we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf, speaking to believers. The meal we take today is the great uniting work in the church. As we eat this bread, God makes us united to one another as we take it by true faith. I don't know if you've noticed, but many congregations will wait to partake of the elements until everyone has been served. Maybe you do that at your home sometimes. Things can get hectic, but generally speaking, it's good to wait for everyone to get to the family table. And then in our home, we'll pray and, and then we'll get to eating. Well, in God's home, his family meal, we wait for each other to eat and drink. The meal purchased by our brother Jesus that brings us to our Father in heaven is one that shows love and politeness. Humbly, we serve each other at this meal and wait for each other. Our differences melt away. We look out to each other and see, here's one 
There's one for whom Christ died, one whom he welcomed into his home with me, knowing forever we'll be together, and we have no more right to be here than anyone else, amazed at his love for us. John Calvin says this, he says, we cannot love Christ without loving him in the brethren. We cannot love Christ without loving him in the brethren. And so today, as we participate, we participate in a sign of unconditional favor and selfless love, giving that unconditional favor and selfless love to one another. If we partake of the supper in a selfish, individualistic way, this is just for me, only me, we haven't fully fed on Christ who loves our neighbor in the pew. We must love each other. Indeed, Paul admonished the church at 1 Corinthians 11, don't go ahead, wait for each other. In conclusion, God gives us tokens of his love. He doesn't point to our sincerity, but his own grace and goodness sincerely given. And by these tokens, he calls us, remember my finished work. And by these tokens, he wants us to look forward in hope. Jesus will return, and a glorious meal will be prepared in the new heaven and new earth, but he said he waits to take that meal in fullness with us until all of us reach the granary, are brought into the harvest, are brought into his promised home. And by these present earthly tokens, bread and juice, he serves us assurance as we look up to him today. He assures us of his love that will never let us go, and he will feed our faith in this wilderness until we get to the promised land of fullness, of sight. And fourth, the Lord draws us to love others. He has called them, he's justified them. Drop any discord and accept each other, waiting for one another. Yes, as you come to the table today, thank God for hope looking forward, faith looking back, trust looking up, and love looking up and out. All this is proof that the Lord loves you, and he invites you to sit down and have a meal with him today. Assured, you belong. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for your grace and generosity. You've made a table in the wilderness for once rebellious people. You call us now saints, your people, sanctified by grace. And you call us loved more than we can hope, forgiven and righteous, all by signs and seals. You are present at the meal, handing it out through human means, you help us to look back. You help us to look forward, to see Jesus who with nail-pierced hands and scars prepares a feast for all you love. By your spirit, teach us to love one another, not for what we have been, but for what we will be. As celebrants forever, Come and strengthen our faith, hope, and love. We come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We have opportunity to sing. And we're going to sing, Lord, you give the great commission. Let's rise and sing.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospels tell us that on the first day of the week, the day on which our Lord rose from the dead, that he appeared to some of his disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of bread. Come then to the joyful feast of our Lord. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We bless you, Lord, for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image and calling us to be your people. We thank you that you did not abandon us in our rebellion against your love, but sent prophets and teachers to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we thank you for sending Jesus, your Son, to deliver us from the way of sin and death by the obedience of his life by his suffering on the, upon the cross, by his resurrection from the dead. We praise you that he now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and out of every people unites us into one holy church. Therefore, with the whole company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you God most holy, and we sing with joy. Holy, holy. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of this sacrifice until he comes again. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We proclaim that our Lord Jesus was sent by the Father into the world, that he took upon himself our flesh and blood, and bore the wrath of God against our sin. We confess that he was condemned to die, that we might be pardoned, and suffer death, that we might live. We proclaim that he is risen to make us right with God, and that he shall come again in the glory of his new creation. This we do now, and until he comes again. Heavenly Father, show forth among us the presence of your life-giving Word and Holy Spirit to sanctify us in your whole church through this sacrament. Grant that all who share the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, may be one in him and may remain faithful in love and hope. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may, be soon, may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. As we draw near to the table of our Lord, let us confess our Christian faith, saying together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Congregation in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him, are now invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord. Holy Father, in thanks for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, in the joy of his resurrection, in the hope of his coming again, we present ourselves a living sacrifice and come to the table of the Lord. The gifts of God, for you the people of God.
Has everyone been served? People of God, take, eat, remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for complete forgiveness of all our sins. Beloved, take, see, smell, taste. Remember and believe that the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. This morning, I'm, reminding, I'm reminded how awesome it is just standing here and watching the body of Christ receiving the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's just awesome. It's holy. Congregation in Christ, since the Lord has fed us at his table, let us praise his holy name with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. My soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. He satisfies my desires with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. Would you rise? Dear congregation and body of Christ, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit Almighty, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>